ladies and gentlemen, everyone around and in between, this is Debate Sensei, CETA edition, where we talk about things relevant to the Cross-Examination Debate Association. I have with me the Director of Debate from California State University, Long Beach, Devin Cooper. Thank you so, so much, Devin, for being with me. Thanks for having me. All right. So uh, this uh, series is called uh, Debate Sensei CETA, but we're talking NDT. And li listen, I'll be honest with you. A lot of people that aren't in the organization kind of just blends these two together, that it, it's all just policy debate. Um, so let's start by distinguishing these two organizations. Uh, what is so unique about the NDT? Uh, well, so both of them have culminating tournaments. Mm -hmm. uh, and so CETA is a tournament that it's open invitation. Like anybody can come to it. Um, you don't have to qualify for it. You just sign up and go. Um, and so that it has been aptly named the People's Tournament now. Oh, because pretty much most oh. of the teams that are winning CETA or in the late Elims of CETA are mostly uh, K teams or flex teams that do the K, you know, okay. so that's typically what CETA is now. The NDT is a little bit more, I'll say, socially conservative when it comes mm -hmm. to the judging and the expectations. Um, the NDT is like the culminating tournament of a senior's like year, mm -hmm. right? And so the NDT, you have to qualify through um, several different ways. Either you get a first round bid at large, which you're in the top 16 teams in the nation, or you compete at your district tournament and you have they have a tournament or some districts are so small that they have to rank, which oh. means they just rank the teams that have based on their records throughout the entire oh. year. And then they just like forward who they ranked. Um, and then there's also the second round slash third team bid, um, which is the second round is like you competed at districts and you didn't make it. So here's the second round. Oh, okay. Okay. And the third team is like you already have two teams that are in the NDT. And so you have to apply to get a third one. And okay. How how many teams are allowed into this tournament? Do you know? Uh, top 78. 78. Oh, goodness. So CETA had 84 or something? 88. 88. 88. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, somewhat comparable. But I remember at our recap, you were saying some of the teams just didn't go to CETA. And so you're going to be seeing some of the same teams, but some. Um, yeah, because you can't, you can't really be a novice and go to the NDT. Right. Right, 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 right. Well, the NDT also has a special and very prestigious award known as the Copeland Award. Uh, mm -hmm. You were telling me ab about that. And I, uh, you just showed me a, a little breakdown of the awards in the past. And it seems like right at right at the turn of the century, oh, that's kind of, kind of balanced right there. It went from just awarding a single team to awarding the top five teams. Mm -hmm. All right. So, you know, more than 20 years, it's been going on that way. How is that decided? Is there any sort of do, do people get is there any sort of horse race going on that people get the, the background into or? Yes. Um, well, pretty much there is the people who are ranking for the NDT um, for the first round bid teams. They are mm -hmm. the ones that are ranking for who is in the top five. OK, um, so it's like I feel like it's like over 10 different people. Mm. that do it and um so in order to be like in the top five you have to oftentimes be at a program that can support like national level travel right um you gotta have the budget for it you gotta be able to have the coaching right you gotta be able to stay current in the arena amongst all the people you're competing against yeah i'm looking at some of the past years i'm seeing Michigan several times over, Emory, Emory Harvard, yeah, Cal Berkeley, Michigan uh, State, Michigan, all the traditional top teams usually. Yeah. There's usually maybe one or two K teams that might get in there, but it's not always. Okay, okay. And but you there it there's not any sort of like 
running total that people can go and look at who's in the top ranked? It, what did they, what did these ten people do? They just come together as a committee? And yeah, they don't discuss with each other. I don't believe. Oh. Um, but they rank based off of the national based national level tournaments mm. that people have attended. Um, and so usually the majors like Harvard, Kentucky, mm -hmm. um, Wake Forest, Northwestern, Texas, right? Usually yeah. your positioning is determined off of like five or six tournaments. And so that kind of creates the conditions for like how you start to rank people and where they are. Mm -hmm. Now, if you've won a major tournament, that already puts you probably like in the top eight. Mm, okay. Now, how about the the recent ones? Do they include ADA and, and CETA? No. no. Cause those are all like seen as national championship tournaments. Okay. And the the it's already been set. Like once you get the first round bid, who is in the top already? Okay. And what do you get for this? Like, do like the is it a plaque or is it just? So it is a traveling plaque. It's huge. It's a oh. big traveling plaque that has all the names of the people that have been in that position since two thousand. So, at this point, there would be twenty three different teams on each plaque that is not the Copeland Award. Mm -hmm. um, and so, we would possibly be on one of those plaques. All right. All right. Yeah, I mean, because a lot of those tournaments that you named, you did very well at, right? Yeah. yeah, like we got to the final round of Texas, right? Quarters of Harvard, we won Kentucky, quarters Kentucky. of the Northwestern. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay, all right. Hopefully. So, yeah, mathematically, like it would be a surprise. It'd be a surprise otherwise. All right. So let's think as a coach. All right. What are some of your responsibilities that you have to do for your team that you're taking to the end? They've already qualified. You know that you're going. All right. So you're in that situation. It, it, you just had CETA. It's coming up to NET. It's like, I got to do these things. Like um, specifically, do you have to go through um, and do the judging, preferencing or anything like that? Yes. Yeah. We literally <laughs> finished that earlier today. It's like oh, 196 judges. And so what do you do for those 196 people? What like is it are you ranking them or is it just no, no, no? Yes, it's all of that. Oh okay. it's a lot of no, 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 okay. no. Because the NDT is flooded with judges that don't really want to hear what we have to say. Okay. And that's okay. sad that that's it. Or it's not even that sometimes they don't want to hear what we got to say. It's just more so they don't believe in the things that we have to say, or they think that the form in which we're doing it is not up to their standard or their norms. Right. So there's a lot of people, even people that are, are like K judges in some ways that we have to put really low, which is unfortunate because, you know, they have some issue with them or something. Um, so, so, but, is is this where you like actually did you have to go through and say all right this person is ranked 109th out of 109 and then this person is ranked 108th and that that's how it goes oh my god mm -hmm. it's an ordinal number system oh my god and so, so the people we're... below a certain rank just you'll never see them hopefully <laughs> oh really hopefully okay but the problem is, is that the higher you get in the tournament, like semis, finals, the less available are the judges who are like good for us. Oh, wow. Unless their team is in semis or something. Right, right. Well, and, or they put themselves, they volunteer themselves to judge. That could yeah. be a thing. Okay. Okay. Um, you were saying that the ADT, the ADA, sorry, the ADA, I'm getting the two of them mixed up, mm -hmm. um, uh, that you were anticipating that that was going to be very uh, policy focused, which is not necessarily your approach. And y'all, yeah, it was. I mean, yeah, but it still was very policy focused. Yeah. It's just that my students know how to debate policy things. Okay. It's not like we're just saying vacuous K, here yeah. it is. Right. right. We have, I make them do application to the case a lot for okay. judges because I know that's something that they're looking for. 
But even in the world that we do that, it's still not enough for some of these judges. They just want to see a counter plan or they want to see oh. a, a diss ad, you know. So, got yeah. It. Got it. Now, if they want to see a counter plan, are are, are you – you know what? Let's get into into that when we get to the, the next strategy. But okay. um, did you break a new AF at the ADA? Uh, yes, in the final round. Uh, oh, in the final. That's right. That's right. That's right. I remember that now. Um, so it, are y'all, let, let's, let's talk about, let's do AF first. If you are preparing to go to the NDT, what are you thinking about is uh, any sort of adjustments on the affirmative? Yeah, all of their affirmatives have been adjusted and they have three new ones. They got three new ones. Yeah. So what's the strategy on rolling out these three new ones? Are are you uh, when we hit like the teams that are also on the Copeland panelists? <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, that's what it <laughs> yeah. is. Okay. So so if you're going to the NDT, like you basically you probably even if you're not up for the Copeland, you should be looking out for people who are because that is like where you can like really I don't know try to shine, try to get like the edge that you could really disrupt the bracket that way. Yeah, I don't really predict any upsets on our yeah. behalf, like right. of people upsetting us, uh, right. because we have done very particular training and we have scoured the field to figure out the things that we need mm -hmm. for teams. And um, I think they're going in very prepared. Okay. Like last year they made it to Octos. Um, I think they mm. can make it further this year. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, what about somebody who might be taking a team who, you know, they don't like their chances. Uh, like they got third team, you know, they, 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 they barely got through districts. Um, you know, it's like, uh, they're, they're maybe a, a new team they're, they're They don't have all their sort of ducks in a row that you might have. Mm -hmm. Um, what would, what would that take? What would a strategy for them be to, what would success be for them? Try to survive. <laughs> Maybe win three rounds, okay. maybe four. If you even if you're able to trip up and get five, that would be awesome because it means you automatically break. Right. Because um, fives automatically break at the NDT. It's constitutionally bound. Right. It's a uh, eight prelims. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So that would make that would make a the, the majority of the rounds. Okay. And so. Um, having strategically i don't know some people trying to creep up the back end maybe you know you get a bad draw and you get some of those copeland panelists on your first ones and then you're like all right well you just... will get some of those copeland panelists on your first one because the tournament is ranked already it's based off a of ranking oh. system oh you so, walk in oh wow okay so yeah oh, so if you are a person if you're wow. a person that's a second round bid team mm, right oh bless your, bless your heart you I, did not, I did not know that dynamic was in place from round one everything is already bracketed mm -hmm. oh god okay not bracketed well, in the not center, bracketed like, but like seated yeah 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 seated 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 so better, that's how you because uh, like the copeland panelist teams those are like one through five right oh so my one is going to hit yeah the lowest, 72 two, right <laughs> second lowest yeah. three the third lowest you know wow wow so if yeah. you're if you're barely squeaking into that tournament like it might just be the strategy to try to creep up the back end of of you know try to get in on the back end of that bracket mm -hmm. oh maybe just write off those first couple of rounds and then try mm -hmm. to oh man the other major difference about this tournament too is that every round has three judges every round has three judges yeah holy crap like Every round is an out round. <laughs> Does that mean you have to bring, like, you're only bringing one team. Do you have to bring three judges? I have two. It's like me and uh, another coach, Jason, who was right. born. And she has to judge seven, and I got to judge seven. Right. Well, you actually only need, like, one and a half, right? Because you only got one team. Yeah. So, okay. Well, no. So, that's the thing. The NDT wants 13 rounds. 13 rounds. Wow. Per team. Got it. Oh, oh, I see how they're doing it. Rather than just how many judges per team, it's how many rounds per team. Yep. Goodness. Goodness. And so we had to do an extra one because our district 
is we have to do a round of scouting. It's like our donation to the tournament or something. Oh, so I guess I guess I'm gonna do that. Um, but <laughs> whatever. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, so Long Beach is coming in strong. They know that the first rounds, you know, they're they're gonna be power matched, which is in in y'all's benefit, right? Yeah, but we also have like a bloodlust because of what happened at Cedar. Oh, uh, okay. Like, I'm pretty sure that's something that's on their minds. I mean, you unlikely to be hitting that team very early, though, right? No. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. I mean, could be possibly, I don't know, because they were not a first round bid team mm. and they were a team out of district. So it could okay. be it. Oh, okay. Um, when would you expect to start like the first couple of rounds are like, you know, you're you're pitted up against somebody that you're expecting to win. You gotta make sure that you're obviously on your game. There's nobody nobody's a walkover at the NDT, right? But um mm. <laughs> <laughs> There is. There's there's some bottom. Oh, okay. NDT. There's some bottom. Yeah, but I mean you, that bottom actually. Yeah, you don't wanna you don't want to uh you know count your chickens before they're hatched uh, type of thing, right? It's like you, you want to make sure that you're executing on those ones, even though those ones you're kind of expecting to win. When does it start getting a little hairy? You know, four. It, round four. Is round and uh how many days is the tournament? Five, pretty Five much. Days. Okay, so is round four still on the first day, or is it starting the second day? Second day. There's All three, right. three, three, four. Sorry, three, six, nine. Yes. And three, then there's six, nine. Whoa. Three, sorry, three, 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 four. Oh, you do two elimination rounds on the third day? Um, <clears throat> One? One, I believe. Okay. Well, on one, two, three. Round one, then six, and then the next day is seven and eight, and then the Elam. Okay. So three, three, yeah, three. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Something yeah. like that. And then the, the next day is like all the rest. All the rest. Okay. Um, so do you have a different strategy for day two? Like day one is kind of like we got, we're like, no, yeah. um, we're going to roll in with what we have. Um, they made major updates to their regular stock affirmatives mm -hmm. um and they're going to roll with them for the beginning and they've changed a substantial amount of things so that all the prep that these other teams have been doing for those things especially when it comes to card and dites those cards don't oh. exist anymore sorry oh they don't exist at oh gotcha <laughs> yeah. they're not in the half anymore. I understand what you're saying yeah yeah i understand i understand um so, so if if on the affirmative they're expecting more policy oriented stuff and you kind of come in with critical affirmatives what's it without giving away the game here like how do you thread that needle well everybody is going to be reading framework against us pretty much okay okay like all the teams are going to be traditional even teams that are like semi i guess k teams or whatever they want to call themselves um they're going to read framework against us okay but you're you're not necessarily coming up with like just straight up policy stock issues that you're you're running on the affirmative. Got it. Nope. We're going straight up with the stuff that we always were running. Just gonna have some different iterations. Um, they got these three new apps that they haven't broken yet, and I think those are probably gonna be in the elim rounds around seven or eight or something. But so seven break rounds or elim rounds. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All so right. we're not really gonna break a new app in the prelims unless it's like one of the top top teams yeah and you have do you have any affirmatives that are just custom made for any teams without disclosing who those are no okay i don't think they're the, i don't think any of them are that that important to be honest do you think there's any affirmatives that people are custom making for you possibly okay they uh, probably might want to try to beat us to the migration debate or the migrant debate okay i don't know if that's what they want to do if they're not that identity category, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. They, uh, they or some people might, um, some traditional teams might try to, um, they might try to include black people in their 1AC in some way. Like they'll say like, oh, this climate change, it affects black people. If we disarm nuclear weapons, it'll increase investment in 
the Green New Deal and to give Black people more access to clean environments, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. So okay. It's like, it's like, okay, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> No, I was watching. I was watching one of the the few recorded rounds, and I remember seeing that. It's like, he, and and Diego seems to to handle that really well. About like, all right, tell me how this happens, because you just kind of assume that it just magically happens at, right after the yeah. And so, and it's in those details where the the negative strategy starts. Coming yeah, because I told them like, don't let these folks get up here and just like create this magical world where everything just goes away because you pass the plan. It's like, that's not how that works. Yeah, yeah. And you don't get the fiat, that type of change. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. No. Yeah. So let's transition a little bit to the negative. And one of the questions that I had when you were talking about like people expecting counter plans, do you adapt at all to that? Like, for instance, in your, in your critique, does the alternative basically play the role of a counter plan sometimes okay if the team doesn't have any offense on it and hasn't read picks bad <laughs> oh. <laughs> i love it it does is, is that the major complaint the major sort of reputation it's like you run your critique and then the alternative and they, they just frame the alternative as a pick mm-hmm. or a floating pick or whatever a floating pick Oh, tell me that. Like, I, I mean, I'm familiar with pick. Well, because the floating pick is, is like, you're not going to be direct about oh. saying it solves the F until, like, maybe the 2NC, maybe the 2NR. Mm. I don't know. Depends on the level of offense that people put on the argument. Mm-hmm. But also, if people even say picks good or bad, because if they say, like, oh, picks are bad, we're going to, like, take them on that theory debate in the 1NR. And then in the two and R, we're going to pivot and say, oh, yeah, we're going to get rid. It still solves your app. <laughs> All right. But yeah. um, well, now, if, criti- if, if critiques are generally, you know, have a harder time at NDT. Do you frame it differently is it at all? Or is that it seems like that would put you at a disadvantage? No, I mean, I, we we have like a few ways in which we'll frame alternatives or just not go for alternative based on who the judges are and you know how their judge paradigm reads but like for the most part we don't go for the alternative in the same way in every debate okay even if it's the same yeah because it depends on how the team answers us and like what they say to Mm -hmm. be offensive um so yeah all right. Um, is there any uh, like, is there anything else that a a sort of outsider like myself would need to know about entering into the? If I was taking somebody to the NDT for the first time, I'm like, holy crap! I got someone in. Uh, what's the what's the hidden thing that maybe we haven't talked about? I mean, honestly, it's just like you just gotta know a lot of stuff about oh. the topic and about things like you can't <laughs> go into the ndt and think that you're just going to willy-nilly get some stuff with some generic stuff like you got to really have a commitment to your scholarship or the way that you debate and have next level updates of evidence and stuff like that like you constantly have to update especially when it's an international topic and so that's one of the things that we've been doing it's been cutting a lot of case cards mm for the traditional teams, because judges want you to have interaction with the case at the NDT yeah. a lot more than they do at CETA. So we've been doing that quite a bit. And um, I mean, there's even times where we are reading cards that are outdated, oh, outdating cool. their stuff. Oh, oh, outdating. Oh, got it. Got it. Yeah. yeah. So okay. it's just like, y'all reading cards from 2022. We're reading cards from 2024. Like, <laughs> a bit your ass. It's a traditional yeah. app. What's going right, on? Right. Well, it's something like a topic like nuclear. I mean, and considering how much um, like kinetic warfare is just happening in the world right now, yeah. um, like it, it seemed like that situation, like the, your cards would 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 change pretty regularly as far yeah, as. Yeah, but the problem is, is that a lot of these traditional teams are playing a game. Mm. And they're fabricating what reality looks like. And they're okay. creating simulations of what could possibly happen if certain things are configured the way that they have constructed it. Mm. And so 
a lot of it is like they're making like these existential threat constructions of like what would a conflict look like if Russia's technology did X, Y, Z, or China perceived this or that, or you know if oh, North Korea did this testing of a nuclear weapon, like all that type of stuff. And it's like it's not saying that these places actually are going to do those things or have done those things. It's just that they're just like asserting that that could be a possibility and a chain of events will occur because of the prediction that they're making. Yeah, policy debate has a very long sort of uh, reputation for wanting to talk about nuclear war. I remember that. Um, so at NPDA nationals, they always invited the Irish from the World's Debate Institute, and they would they would clown on Americans mercilessly. Like they 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 had a debate about the Olympics, and one of the Americans brought up some sort of you know nuclear war scenario, something like that, and it was just the biggest joke to um, the the Irish debaters at that time. It's kind of hard to avoid that when the topic is nuclear weapons though right you know it's like when when uh you're you're expected to it's like uh, and so uh, i feel like i've heard that story oh yeah yeah was it me maybe, maybe i'm getting no, old. it was a long time ago oh yeah like yeah. i'm pretty sure either my coaches told me that sort like when when did that happen did it happen like in the early 2000s i think yeah yeah oh two oh three yeah, because my like, debate coaches when I was at Towson were telling me about that. Oh, really? Yeah, because oh. like my coaches used to work a lot with the World Debate Institute, which uh, was like really hosted by like Vermont and Snyder. Yes, yes. Like Tuna, Tuna. Sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Oh man, he was That's awesome. <laughs> yes, he was. Like I went to debate camp when I was a sophomore in high school at University of Vermont in Burlington. Oh wow. Tuna was really nice. He was a great person. Oh. Um, like he said, he said something to us like, oh, if y'all clean up and do this correctly, like I'll let y'all stay an extra two hours outside of curfew. And we were like, okay, <laughs> okay. All right. So all of us like did it and we were able to stay out and it was just crazy. He used to do like really nice stuff, like get us ice cream and stuff. It was like really kind. Yeah. 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 I remember looking up his, his, his uh, website too, man, we need to, yeah, save that. That. I think it's like the bait Bible or something. Something yeah, along those lines. Yeah, I remember finding it because, you know, you go out and search for as much stuff as you can. All mm -hmm. right. Well, so do you find yourself like right now, you're saying that you're cutting a lot of uh, stuff for the policy. Does that mean that it, it, it's a different type of prep? Than it, it's in? not. It's just more of a sense of urgency. Oh, so okay. the other thing that I did as well, and this is why I think my team separates themselves from a lot of other teams, is that I went and I did all a like a whole lot of research, like a lot. Like I went and like got articles from all these different places, all these different sources, and I put them into a folder and I said, y'all cut. Mm. Cut. <laughs> so they were all cutting cards from that pop, from that pool and also using terms and stuff that they might find out of those articles to look for other things so like literally if i'm looking at the dropbox right now like there's a folder that's called new books 2024 and as of right now it has over 40 different books and articles in it and it looks like diego's name is on at least 15 of them that he's done already that he's done already and like yeah. what what's the what's the workload like let's say on an average day what would you expect somebody to put in for an npte prep well so i mean i don't really have any heavy expectations like i just want them to go and do their thing and be the most prepared that they can be like i don't think that like at the level in which they're debating i don't think a, a card is going to change the outcome of a debate right. Yeah, it's yeah, more yeah. so about the execution of what they're doing, especially if they're going against another K team or a team that's like mid range K team. It's like all about the articulation, how you spend the arguments. Now it's good to have cards. Like we got cards. Um, we got some more cards to answer some of their framework stuff, like procedural fairness type answers and stuff. Um, but 
it's all and most of this stuff is going to come down to pre-round prep and if they really listen and understand the stuff that i'm telling them and mm -hmm. what the other coaches are telling them because we're going into this we have three coaches that are going to be coaching with me well two oh, other okay. coaches so it's going to be a lot more help is what i'll say um because we got like our one of our alums who's also working for the team now jason green mm -hmm. um she qualified for the ndt in 2020 but yeah oh, okay oh, so 20 yeah i'm like what happened <laughs> like an idiot yeah <laughs> and it was it was so unfortunate because she worked so hard to get there and to oh. win those rounds and oh. like yeah and that happened yeah. and oh. so she is like kind of like trying to project a lot of her legacy into them be like hey you gotta do this and you know teach yeah that that lasts for a while, but it fades. Like you know what I mean. Like I, I talk about my debate days almost like. Well, so I don't, I don't know. I think that the 2020 incident is something that really affected people that were in debate, especially if you were a senior. Mm. Like I think that really caused some like different mental health situations because. Oh, yeah. I mean, because I don't know. It's just like I think that you know a lot of debaters who were seniors on that year. That maybe didn't go to the NDT before, or it was their first time, or the second time, and they were like, "Oh, it's gonna be my, my time that I actually break." Because last yeah. year I was like four four, and it was just taken away, and it's just like you're no, just left in this kind of empty void, especially if you're a person that's a big fan girl of debate. Oh man, I can and, see that. You yeah. know, and I think that like that's something that literally triggers people every time we come around to this time of the year. Um, or when that stuff is brought up, you know, so it's like because this is like the time period when people start to reminisce about their run at the NDT and stuff like that. And so, you know, okay, okay, well, um, this is the last tournament of the season. Um, after we do a recap of this, we're going to be talking about what the next topics are going to be uh, next year. So I wish you and Long Beach luck, my old alma mater. It's been a great ride so far, and I hope you all see it all the way to the end. Thank you. Hopefully. All right. <laughs> all right. See ya. All right.